get started with the October 14th meeting after our roll call. Bielicic, Cupman Gomez. Present. Dodge. Here. Fernandez. First. Montesino. Here. Cervantes. Here. Our first item is our consent agenda, and all items appearing on the consent agenda are recommended actions which are considered to be routine. There is an opportunity for any members of the public wishing to address us on any item currently listed under our consent agenda. I'm Nee Bridges, um, and I'm here to talk about 4.4. I just wanted to um, talk about how Community Bridges is really in support and recommends the increase in the staff report uh, for the um, hourly living wage uh, code. Um, and I hope that the council continues to grapple with the impact um, that this may have on other city contractors and uh, to the social service sector. And also that it consider itself that this not just be a unfunded mandate, but that this also serve as a cause um, to continue also ensuring that the subcontractors, um, such as nonprofit organizations, are also taking this into light. Thank you. Sure, uh, I'll wait and see if other members of the public wish to address us on any items on our consent agenda. See none, I'll return this to council for questions or appropriate motion. Council Member Dodge. Microphone. Not on. That's true. <laughs> I'll get there by 6:30, though. Um, also, first of all, I haven't met the new CEO, so I th was hoping you take a moment to introduce yourself. And but I'd like to make the motion to be able to uh, uh, approve the consent agenda. Okay. I'd like to second that. Okay. Motion by Councilmember Dodge and a second by Councilmember Montesino. Discussion, Council Member Dodge. Um, I just um, I think that item four four point six uh, allows us to be in more in line with uh, the uh, wages for our, um, our employees, and I'm happy to support that. And uh, I look forward to us uh, moving forward with our employees and uh, recognizing all that they do for the city of Watsonville. And uh, I'm I'm really excited about supporting item four point six. Thank you. Council Member Trina Kaufman Gomez. Yes, I just want to make sure that I, we do proper acknowledgement for uh, Rosemarie, who is part of our consent agenda for the approval for the PVWMA, because of how many years of service and dedication she's given to our community on behalf of PVWMA and the representation. The other item I just want to make sure I've had a comment on as well is we're going back on the general plan here. It is something that we will be revisiting again and spending more time on with regarding the corrections and modifications that are going to come as the process comes in for the council to be up to speed on the changes and uh, the recommendations based on those proceedings. So while we are putting this through on consent, um, please let the voice be heard that it doesn't mean that it's going away, and it doesn't mean that we're not listening. It does mean that we want to do what we can to be proactive in working something that's effectively to make this a success on moving this forward in terms of our, our 2030 general plan. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further comments, questions, or discussion from council, we will go ahead and do a roll call. Cupman Gomez? Yes. Dodge? Yes. Hernandez? Yes. Montesino? Yes. Cervantes? Yes. So moving forward on our new business, we do have a presentation on the Sanctuary Scenic Trail Master Plan. Hi, how are you? Good evening, members of the City Council, Mayor Cervantes. I'm Murray Fonts. I'm Principal Engineer with the Public Works and Engineering, Public Works and Utilities Department. And I'm pleased to be here this evening with Corey Coletti of the Regional Transportation Commission to make a presentation concerning 
the council approval of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail Master Plan. I'm going to invite Corey to address the council and speak about the master plan itself. Let me say with regards to Corey's background, she's been the primary person at the Regional Transportation Commission to shepherd this plan through and I don't think there's anybody more qualified to present or to answer questions on it than she is. Corey. Thank you, Murray. Um, good evening, council members. Um, I do know a lot about this project and Murray has um, advised me to reel in my enthusiasm and <laughs> not give you the two hour tutorial, but to stick to seven minutes or less. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Um, so I am here uh, to present highlights of our Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail Master Plan, give you a little background um, on its development and talk about where we're at today and our next steps. Um, we're really enthused at your support of this master plan. Um, we've won a number of awards already on it and um, we're really um, excited about it serving as the guiding document um, to um, implement this project into the future. Um, as you know, trail, bicycle and pedestrian projects, trail projects in particular, um, really expand our transportation options. They incentivize getting around by bicycle and by walking for um, of people with all sorts of mobility ranges. Um, when we purchased the rail line, we intended to expand transportation options, um, including bicycle and pedestrian use, as well as um, passenger um, and freight rail service. The 50 mile Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail Network is, um, it's a broad project. Um, it really, it, it identifies the 32 mile rail corridor as the spine of the project. Um, but it also looks at other connections in order to serve the key destinations um, that we have identified as being within one mile of the tracks, namely half the county's population, 44 schools, and 92 parks. We are really hoping that um, we'll be able to construct uh, significant sections of the project within 10 years. Um, and we have funded three miles already. Uh, the total estimated cost is $100 and, um, and $27 million. In large part, that's due to the fact that there are a lot of bridges, a lot of crossings. Um, Rail corridors are really great for trails adjacent to them because the gradient is so gentle, uh, making it really accessible for almost everyone. Um, however, that means a lot of bridges to smooth out the topography. Um, this is a two-county project. It connects to Monterey County system of trails and intends to arc the Monterey Bay. Um, Sam Farr, Congressman Sam Farr, has been this project's uh, biggest champion and secured uh, millions of dollars in federal funds. Um, his original vision was to highlight the National Marine Sanctuary and to do that through active transportation options. Um, we developed this master plan within certain constraints. Uh, namely maintaining property, private property rights, uh, maintaining rail service operations, and protecting agricultural operations. We went through a two and a half year planning process. We had a number of stakeholder meetings, um, technical workshops, public workshops, um, your public work staff, planning staff. Um, you know, we had a, a very engaged process and the master plan was adopted after that two and a half year process. Um, and um, we also, at the same time, uh, certified an environmental impact report, um, which will enable us to streamline environmental clearance in the future. Uh, the master plan defines the goals, the trail alignment. Uh, it offers design features. Um, we identified cost estimates that um, your city staff was able to utilize when uh, submitting a grant application. Um, we presented operation and maintenance scenarios, um, some implementation objectives, 
Um, and we asked at the end of that process that the county of Santa Cruz, the city of Capitola, Santa Cruz, and Watsonville consider adoption of the project as well of, of the, um, the master plan. The Santa Cruz Transportation Commission is the legal lead agency and bears the um, obligations uh, associated with that act. So the the act of the cities and the county adopting the master plan is really symbolic to show support and it doesn't actually bear any um, legal obligations. The trail network, we defined it into 20 segments so that we could have um, logical projects with um, independent utility basically that could be constructed over time. Um, so in some instances, um, there's only a portion of a project that can be uh, constructed at one time because of various constraints, maybe bridges or cost. So we really um, try to allow for the variety of implementation mechanisms that we could. Um, we identified the type of uh, facilities that this would encompass. There's the rail trail, of course. Um, the, there's an existing rail trail, a depot park in the city of Santa Cruz that you can see a photograph of right there. And we have the, some natural surface uh, paths and boardwalks um, to access the coast or to uh, mitigate um, impacts on environmentally sensitive habitats. Um, we also provi provided um, trail features and amenities, uh, benches, fencings, signs, um, the bridges and trailheads. Those aren't really amenities. They're not really optional, but um, they went under, under that category. Um, fencing. One of the things to uh, note about the master plan, and it is available on our website, so you're welcome to download it, and we're also happy to give you hard copies if you would like, is we, we try to not make it prescriptive at all. So we offered a lot of options. So you see uh, a couple of different trail fencing types with different vari uh, of varying degrees of security. And that's um, intended so that some areas like neighborhoods don't want um, you know, an obstruction, um, you know, visual obstruction, or don't feel the need for high security, whereas in other areas where the rail trail will abut um, industrial operations or agriculture, um, more safety, um, heightened safety features will be um, desired by the community. So it's all meant to be determined on a segment by segment basis. We make recommendations about what we think is appropriate for um, each segment if if anything out of the ordinary is um, should be considered but we um, we um, we aren't prescribing those um, so where are we now we allocated 5.6 million um, that we had in um, funding um, through congressman's um, FARS efforts and through RTC is obligations um, three coastal rail trail segments have been funded. One on-road bike pet improvement have been funded, has been funded, and we've asked the local public works departments to take the lead in um, building the projects. We ourselves don't have public works um, capabilities, so for the short term, we're really looking to the local jurisdictions to take the lead until we can get up to st speed to um, in um, construction management duties. And we identified other implementation scenarios like, you know, as I just mentioned, the RTC or state parks or other entities. Um, you can see the city of Watsonville segment right here, the um, population within a mile of the tracks that it would serve, the number of schools and parks um, that would access, and the anticipated construction date. Um, what we are going to be doing next is really looking at seeking more funding, um, state and federal funds, as well as um, eventually bringing a sales tax measure to Santa Cruz County voters. Um, 
And um, that's a critical piece of this, that the trail project will get built if we have funding. Current funding is really unreliable and insufficient. 85% um, of the state taxes um, themselves so as to have local revenues for transportation projects. We're going to be looking to at bringing um, a measure to the November 2016 ballot, and we look forward to working with the city of Watsonville to um, craft a uh, transportation package that uh, voters are likely to uh, support. Um, we're also working with um, local um, organizations, um, agencies um, to develop private funding partnerships. The Land Trust of Santa Cruz County, as you might know, has um, uh, agreed to match, to provide matching funds to the city of Watsonville uh, to the tune of 260000 to construct uh, Segment 18. Friends of the Rail Trail and People Power are very active in the community in providing advocacy, education, outreach, and doing uh, segment fundraising. Um, we have other partners, the Coastal Conservancy, Caltrans, the Bureau of Land Management, um, that are all coming together um, to work on this project through rail trail work groups and uh, collaborations. And then um, what we need to do is to uh, firm up these collaborations through agreements. And um, one of the agreements will be for um, trail implementation, the construction, and ongoing maintenance. Um, obviously, there's cost sharing um, that needs to be addressed and liability. And all of those kind of details will be developed um, and negotiated for um, an MOU uh, to be signed that is agreeable to all parties. Um, we'll be engaging in that effort with the city of Watsonville, city of Santa Cruz, the county of Santa Cruz um, in the short term. And um, I know I went over my seven minutes by about two, <laughs> but um, still under 10. <laughs> so I um, uh, think that I should hand it over to Murray at this point for him to fill in any additional information. Thank you. Thank you. In the meantime, you get to see my notes that remind me to introduce myself and who I am <laughs> in case I completely freeze. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. I would like to now address how the city will benefit from the work that the RTC has done and by approving the master plan. The city has an extensive trail network already in place. About 15 years ago, the city took it upon itself to create tr trails throughout the sloughs and has become somewhat of a pioneer within the county on trail network development. This was put into a trails master plan that was adopted by council in 2012. This master plan not only showed the trails that have already been developed, but also projected another 26 miles to be incorporated into the city and outside of city limits. Included in that master plan was what is known as the rail trail. This slide is taken from the city's trails master plan and if you look carefully the black line running through the center noted as 11.2 is the rail trail. So the city has already incorporated this master plan at least the portion within city limits and adjacent into its own trails master plan. Trail development, including devel assisting with the development of the master plan, is in alignment with the strategic goals that the council has adopted. The first goal is to protect public safety. Many of you have witnessed how the existing trails allow pedestrians and bicyclists to travel throughout the city without going on the roadway. The second strategic 
plan goal is to promote economic development. An example would be the recent Monterey Bay Birding Festival, which takes advantage of the numerous slough trails that weave their ways throughout this unique benefit that the city has and has created an opportunity for Watsonville to promote ecotourism. Goal number three is to reduce reliance on reserve funds. As Corey pointed out, the city of Watsonville has received funding for the rail trail project on Lee Road, including the $1.04 million that was provided through a grant of the Regional Transportation Commission, the $260,000 from the Land Trust of Santa Cruz County, as well as funds that are being, that have been raised by Fort or Friends of the Rail Trail to not only assist with this project, but also with another segment of the, the rail trail. The fourth goal is to improve communications. This is an example of an article that was posted on the KON News Network regarding a grant that the city received for wetlands project and trail development. What better news is there than that? The city's getting money to develop trails. And it enhances the community image. Certainly with the birding festival and the numerous visitors who come into the city to use the trails, all eyes are on Watsonville. And the development of the trails within the city as well as the master plan for the rail trail. Staff recommendation, all aboard for the rail trail. <laughs> that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. Council members, do you have any questions on the presentation? Council member Kaufman Gomez? You mentioned about bringing a tax measure November 2016. Can you give us a little bit more elaboration about what that is about since we've already passed one and people are gonna be very sensitive? Um, it's, we're really in the very early stages of exploring this possibility. Our executive director is reaching out to the local municipalities and um, community leaders to um, see what kind of support there is for a measure, what um, interest there is in terms of um, the split, the project split, how much for highway, how much for the trail. Um, so it's really, it's something that's in the very early stages and um, we um, we are going to be working with the city of Watsonville to develop that further and receive your input. Is there a dollar amount in mind that they're looking to work through this process? There is a dollar in mind, a dollar figure in mind, and I um, don't have the spreadsheet in front of me. Um, we'd be happy to forward that to you. It's really, um, it's just a draft um, at this point. It's just being vetted um, around the community. I'd be happy to share it with you. I just don't have it on hand. Yeah. And I just have one more comment and I will be finished. I just want to say that I was really pleased to hear some of the public comments about this uh, that we're getting to support this, which um, have come from North County. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that it's nice to hear that uh, even the support of North County for something that's coming down on the south end will be an encouragement to also attract them to come down in our area and be part of um, expending in tourism and whatever we're doing down in this area as well. So that was good to see. Thank you. Council Member Dodge. I want to thank you for being here this evening. Um, Ms. Ms. Coletti makes presentations to the most political board in the county, which is even a little rougher than this Watsonville City Council on occasion. <laughs> so uh, I doubt you'd be shaken up in, in front of a bunch of teddy bears like us. <laughs> um, I asked for this item to be put on the agenda because I, I really feel that, um, that we needed to bring it, bring it home that we really be able to, as a council, look at it and support it. It's good for um, what we talk about um, to be able to, the scenic, the scenic trail um, has been, as you said, a process for 10 years. Um, we've, as myself and, and, and the chair of the Regional Transportation Commission currently is sitting to my left, and uh, you. <laughs> And we've been able to secure uh, quite a bit of funding over over two million, almost close to a million and a half dollars to be able to to move this forward. And uh, I want to thank you for coming this evening and allowing our community to be able to see um, what it is that affects us directly here in the Pajaro Valley. Thank, 
Thank you. Thank you. Great, thanks. Yeah. Council um, Member Montesino. Yeah, uh, and I also want to uh, restate that um, the, uh, all these efforts that we have come through the Regional Transportation Commission has come through collaboration with uh, ev all agencies because it's a countywide effort. Um, Sa city of Santa Cruz, City of Watsonville, Capitola, everybody's been engaged. Everybody uh, sees sees this as as um, a very positive thing for the community, um, and it's and it's going to be a futuristic for and not a lot of communities in in the country have uh, the, the potential that we have and the beauty that we have so uh, uh, we got to enjoy it it's going to be for our future and it's going to be for our kids thank you. thank you this is an opportunity as well for members of the public wishing to provide input on the scenic trail master plan if there's anybody wishing to you can approach the microphone just state your name also where you reside Hello, my name is Amelia Conlin. I'm the director of People Power, and we're Santa Cruz County's advocate for better bicycling, and I live in Santa Cruz. And I'm here to support the adoption of the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail Master Plan. The Sanctuary Scenic Trail is our highest advocacy priority, and it has the potential to transform the county by providing a safe place to bike and walk. The 32-mile coastal rail trail will connect Watsonville with Capitola, Aptos, and Santa Cruz, making bike commuting between cities a safe and more comfortable option. And who knows, if traffic is bad, it might even be faster. Uh, the trail will also be a significant draw for tourism, bring increased economic activity, and improve the safety of the currently unused rail line. Adopting the master plan is a first step towards getting this project built, and I ask you to adopt it today and to make it a priority for future funding and construction. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to address us on this issue? Seeing none, I will return this to council for discussion. Councilmember Dodge? I'd like to make a motion uh, adopting res um, to support staff recommendation on a resolution adopting the master plan for the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail Network as prepared by the Regional Transportation Commission of Santa Cruz County. I'll second that. Any discussion on the motion? Just really briefly again, I really like to think that uh, um, our, our we're going to hear a variety of different subjects throughout the, the, the night. And I think that this is really uh, something that Watsonville can be very proud of. Um, we've, uh, it's really historical because the goal is to have this trail go all the way around the Monterey Bay and to be able to interconnect so one doesn't need a car to be able to get from one end of the bay to the other, although that walk would probably kill me. <laughs> so. But I really think that it's very forward thinking and I wanna thank staff, Watsonville City staff for pointing out how our rail trails interconnect with this. Um, we talk about um, being offer, increasing tourism to our area. This is uh, very vital to, to that prospect and I, I'm really excited about us going forward in that. So thank you. And thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Dodge, <laughs> <laughs> Council <laughs> Member Dodge. Which hat are you wearing right uh, now? They always um, ask me that. Um, we really appreciate your support. This is a really far-reaching um, project, so uh, broad coalitions and partnerships are really going to be essential. And I do want to commend your staff for being on the front end of um, implementation because they came forward on the first round of applications, and there are some growing pains involved. So we're very appreciative of your staff and your um, council support. Thank you. Councilmember Kaufman Gomez. It, it's certainly a positive direction for a 2030 plan. And I'm pleased to see that we're doing something that is proactive, we can all get on board and agree with and move forward knowing it's good progress for the community. Thank you. Vice Mayor Hernandez. You know, I also look forward to this project. I do use a portion of it, the one that starts from Ford and Kearney to Ohlone. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a lot of lot of uh, pet owners actually use the rail, the trail around, around that area too. I got two pets. I usually walk them around there, and they love it. So I look forward to the uh, extension. You mentioned a connection to Monterey. How's where is that gonna come from? By the way. Um, that's a good question. So it's the, the plan right now is to meet at their Watcher Bridge um, and uh, through an on-road connection. So there would have to be diverging, uh, um, 
uh, divergence from the rail line because it starts moving inland towards the city of Watsonville um, at a certain point, and the connection will be sort of closer to the, to the coast. So the master plan uh, proposes on-road connections um, at the Watcher Bridge, which is off of Beach Street. Great. Thank you. See, no further discussion. There is a motion before us, and I think that we're ready to vote. Chapman Gomez? Yes. Dodge? Yes. Hernandez? Yes. Montesino? Yes. Cervantes? Yes, and the motion is moves forward. Thank you. Oh, I'm bored. <laughs> bored, that's right. Choo choo. <laughs> Some more good things happening in Watsonville. We have a presentation by our Parks and Community Services Director, Ana Espinosa, discussing a possible feasibility study for the renovations of Ramsey Park. Good afternoon, Mayor Cervantes and members of the council and members of the public. Ana Espinosa, Director for Parks and Community Services Department. Um, this afternoon, um, staff is requesting that the city council adopt a resolution authorizing an appropriation of $52,000 from the Park Impact Fee Fund to conduct a feasibility study for the renovation of Ramsey Park Sotomayor soccer field. As a way of background, um, the Ramsey soccer field is located at 1301 Main Street. This is an aerial photograph of Ramsey Park, and outlined in red is the current soccer field. The soccer field um, currently allows for two uh, youth um, fields and one adult, and it is the city's sole official size soccer field. Uh, moreover, the existing um, soccer field consists of natural grass, which requires a high level of maintenance, uh, such as mowing, uh, irrigation, reseeding, aerating, and um, fertilizing. And for example, the field is available approximately 180 days a year. It is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays and during the winter months as well, um, as I mentioned, due to maintenance required. Due to the lack of current lighting, um, the field is only usable during the daytime. Uh, the, the soccer field is highly utilized um, during the available times, and this department is unable to meet the current demand and need for use of the field for practices and, and for games. Um, the city's youth soccer league. Um, extensively uses the field, and over 500 youth participate in our program throughout the year. And the youth are from ages 6 to 13. And recently, with our affiliation with the um, Puma, Club Pumas of the Universidad Nacional Autónoma from Mexico, we have actually seen an increase of over 94 new registered participants that are um, playing in our summer league, for example. And the soccer field is also currently used by um, community adult leagues. And as you can see, over 480 adults use the soccer field as well. Renovating uh, the soccer field would improve the quality um, of the field by providing a consistent um, quality playing surface for, um, and also hopefully provide less maintenance and um, will increase the use of the field. But by um, what we believe to be over 50%. Uh, conducting a feasibility study would serve as an um, effective planning tool to evaluate the field for conversion of artificial turf and for installing lights. Uh, the feasibility study would include a comprehensive site analysis that would consist of geotechnical investigation, 
grading, identification of storm drain, and drainage improvements that may be required. Equally important, the feasibility study would allow the city to develop a design with the input from the community, a site plan, and construction cost estimates. This, the uh, information acquired through this effort would guide the city's um, uh, work in renovating the soccer field. As part of the city's public input process, two workshops would be conducted to engage the community in helping design um, an improved soccer field for the community. It's important to note that on June 24th, um, 2014, the City Council directed staff to uh, explore the sale of the Buena Vista property with the proceeds to be deposited in the park um, impact fee fund for future improvements of the Ramsey soccer field. Um, this served as the first step towards the city's effort to advance its intended goal of improving an existing sports field. And the recommendation before you this afternoon further advances this effort. Thus, in conclusion, it is recommended that the City Council adopt uh, a resolution authorizing an appropriation of $52,000 from the Park Impact Fee Fund to conduct a feasibility study for the renovation of the Ramsey Park Sotomayor soccer field. That concludes my brief report. Thank you. Council Member Montesino. So I got a question. So um, if we approve this, when would it, uh, the feasibility study be, come back to us? We, we would um, proceed within the next month or so to um, request a, a proposal for um, a landscape architect to help us with this work. Um, it will include um, some consultants in various fields, such as um, electrical engineers, for example, um, the geotech firms. So we would need to pursue that work shortly upon approval by the city council. So when do you envision it coming back? Um, I would, it might be in November, the first meeting in November is my estimation. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Kaufman Gomez. I, I do have a few questions for you. You're saying that we're looking at about a 50% increase in usage, and what income will we get out of the 50% increase in usage? Anything we're getting from agencies, or organizations? Currently, we, uh, the adult leagues do rent our soccer field, and so um, we could increase the revenues that we bring in from that amount. So additional leagues for the, inf the, for leagues. the income? and even our own um, leagues that the city operates, um, the more teams that we can in, enroll in our program, um, we do um, charge a fee per player. Therefore, we would have uh, more players and, and increased revenue to help. So player revenue. The, um, what do we currently have in our impact fund on this right now? In the Park Impact Fee Fund, there's $138,000 that's available. Um, and uh, this uh, feasibility study would cost 52000 And I believe that the last time you came, the project itself, the projection was about a $1.6 million project. So we're feasibility for the approximately $1.6 million, of which we're going to be using the proceeds from the Buena Vista sale what progress have we made in terms of that occurring? With the sale of the Buena Vista um, property, we actually conducted a um, property appraisal. So we have information that the city can utilize to move forward with, with the sale of the property. So we would still need to have that sold with cash in hand before we do anything with this feasibility and implementation of it? Yes, that's correct. These funds would help um, build our pool of funds that would help renovate the, the soccer field. The 1.6 million that you've mentioned is a very preliminary amount that staffed um, required from initial research. But the feasibility study would really allow us to determine what would more concrete cost so that we can more effectively plan for that. 
And are we anticipating the sale projection to be half of what our cost is, perhaps? I, I think the last notes I had was about six and a quarter for the value of that property. I, I don't know if we have any numbers to give for the appraisal on that yet. Uh, we're thinking it'll be in the range of a um, million dollars, perhaps, um, somewhere between 800000 to a million dollars. That's better than what we've done for the length of time we've owned the property anyway. So with a feasibility study, we would still have it subject to the sale of the property, and then that would bring in the majority of the revenue, it sounds like, or a very good amount of it. And what would you anticipate the difference um, coming from? The difference would be looking at some foundation support. Um, I've had uh, just very preliminary discussions with a, a pretty large foundation, so I want to further engage them mm -hmm. in discussion with more information that would become available as a result of feasibility study. And um, I've also have talked to at least one um, community philanthropist who may be interested in helping support. Sounds like good progress. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I'll open up the opportunity for members of the public wishing to address us on the feasibility study of the Ramsey Park soccer field. Seeing none, I'll return this to council for additional discussion or appropriate motion. Vice Mayor Hernandez. I'd like to make a motion following staff recommendation to request city council adopt the resolution authorizing the appropriation of $52,000 in PAC fee fund to conduct the feasibility test. I'll second that. Okay, there's a motion before us. Any discussion on the motion? I think it's a good move to move forward. I think that uh, we just need to make sure that we have everything cinched up with regarding the funds at that point instead of moving forward without having the closure of the big amount of money that this project is going to take. And hopefully we can leverage that with the grants and the other philanthro philanthropic uh, folks that are out there willing to put some money to help with this project as well. I also think this is going to be a great opportunity for our Ramsey Park area. I know that those fields are heavily used, so to be able to expand the capacity to be able to serve both children and adults enjoying the act outdoors is um, just keeping in, in line with a lot of what we've been pushing forward here. Also with the renovations of the Ramsey Park, it's just great to see um, the continued investment and in opportunities for young people and adults alike to be able to continue to enjoy city resources. See no additional discussion. I do believe that we're ready to vote. All right, Erwin. Bilicic? Kaufman Gomez? Yes. Dodge? Yes. Hurst? Montesino? Yes. Hernandez? Yes. Cervantes? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much for your presentation. Before we recess into our closed session, uh, we do want to provide members of the public wishing to comment on our closed session agenda. Seeing none, I will recess to closed session and we will return at 6.30.